Good afternoon and welcome to the Induction Healthcare Group PLC Investor Presentation. Throughout the recorded meeting, investors will be in listen-only mode. Questions are encouraged, can be submitted at any time by the Q&A tab situated on the right-hand corner of your screen. Just click Q&A, type your question and press send. The company may not be in a position to answer every question it received during the meeting itself. However, the company can review all questions submitted today and publish responses where it's appropriate to do so. Before we begin, we'd like to submit the following poll. And I'd like to hand you over to Paul Tambo, CEO. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, Paul, uh, and good afternoon, everyone. And uh, thank you for joining us today. I want to walk you through our interim results, which we released this morning. But given that um, some of you may be new to induction, uh, I want to give a bit of an outline of some of the progress that we've made over the last 18 months in stabilizing the business, but also give you some insight as to where uh, we see this business going and where we see there are some great opportunities um, into the future in supporting the NHS uh, through our, our, our platform. Um, and so first, I'd like to introduce a bit about who we are with Induction. So Induction, we are focused on transforming the interaction between care teams and patients in a secondary care environment. So that's an important distinction. We operate with patients in, in, uh, that are going into hospital, um, whether it's to see a specialist, whether it's to have a day a procedure done, or to get some diagnostic tests. So this isn't um, GP land where someone is going to their primary care physician for care, we operate in secondary care. Um, and so if you think there'd be a lot of um, a lot of news and, and, and noise and information going on uh, in, right now around how much pressure the NHS is under uh, and this new Labour government's focus on transforming the NHS in a way that is delivering the kinds of care that people are expecting in a timely way. And so right now there are 6.3 million patients that are waiting for a hospital appointment in the UK. Um, this backlog has built up um, partly over during the pandemic, but also some labor action in the last little while, but also because there are some significant inefficiencies in the system. Um, around 7.5% of hospital appointments are wasted because they're what we call do not attend or basically no shows, uh, which translates into about um, 7.6 million appointments every year being missed. Partly that happens because a patient forgets that they have an appointment. They're sent a paper letter with information about that appointment and they miss it. They forget because maybe their appointment is six months in advance uh, and they're not being sent reminders. Um, sometimes patients uh, um, are unable to attend their appointment and they can't quite figure out how to rebook it or how to reschedule. And so a lot of these appointments are being missed. There's a lot of administrative costs related to those missed appointments, but there's also a lot of cost around paper letters uh, and, and a lot of manual processes. The NHS has also set a target of 92% of patients should be seen um, and, and into treatment within 18 weeks of the 18 weeks of the referral from their GP. <clears throat> and we know that more than 50% of patients are waiting longer than that particular target, again, being driven by um, some of these inefficiencies in the system. There's also a lot of unnecessary in-person visits. Um, there are some visits that could easily be done through a video consultation or using digital forms. You could get someone direct into diagnostics as opposed to having to go to that first appointment. So a lot of pressure um, that induction has an ability and we are supporting the NHS in solving. And so what are some of those capabilities? We have two products, one called Zesty, which is our portal and then Attend Anywhere, which is our video consultation platform. And we've done a lot of work in the last 18 months in integrating those two platforms so that we look at it as an induction platform. But we have capabilities around um, booking. So through uh, Zesty, a patient can, uh, one, confirm their appointment. They can uh, go and schedule an appointment. They can ask to reschedule an appointment. Um, and in something that is more convenient for them. So we have that capability. We're also able to show uh, letters related to an appointment, to a discharge summary. We're able to put test results and other records into the hands of patients through the portal. We also have a digital forms module um, where patients we're seeing right now, forms are being used for waitlist validation. So right now, uh, we're able to, for a, for a trust or for a hospital, send out a large number of forms to patients who are on a waiting list to ask them, do you still need your appointment? Uh, yes, no. And if no, then answer a few other questions so that they can be clinically triaged to determine whether that appointment is not needed. Maybe because they went to the private sector uh, or maybe that uh, they've gotten care other way, other in other places, or they've um, they're they've sort of healed in whatever way. Um, and so we have that digital forms capability to support waitlist validation. We also have uh, with Attend Anywhere deliver virtual consultations. 
uh, which I'll speak a bit more in a minute. Um, and, and other sort of modules that, that are supporting the NHS in some of these pressures. And what's really unique and important about the way that we work is we have a very uh, robust integration engine where we can integrate our portal into the underlying electronic medical records. So whether that's Oracle Cerner, where we have a very deep bi-directional um, uh, integration with them, where if someone is filling out a form, instead of that form going as an email or PDF, that data can be written back directly into Oracle Cerner. We're also integrated into the NHS app. We're one of the few portals that have been at the table with the NHS Wayfinder program from day one in rendering portal features into the NHS app. And the NHS app is going to play such an important role in the future uh, where the, uh, the NHS is putting a lot of emphasis as it being the digital front door. So we have deep integration capabilities um, with the various underlying EMR systems. Um, and so what impact have we had so far? You know, we've seen on average our customers, I talked about the do not attend uh, um, uh, appointments, so it's seven and a half million of those uh, being missed every year. Within our customer group, we see that uh, on average, uh, about a 30% reduction in did not attends. Uh, and in one case, we saw up to 50% a reduction in DNAs. Um, we also have 3.2 million patients accessing um, or have access to induction by the NHS app. Again, really important as we look to the future and the NHS app being the digital front door. We've seen about 71% of patients go paperless, meaning that there's a lot of um, cost savings there. Typically in an outpatient appointment, a patient will receive two letters, each of them costing about a pound. So we're seeing a lot of people go paper, paperless. We've also seen for those that are using our form builder product, see about a 7% reduction in wait list because those patients just don't need those appointments anymore. So a lot of proof points, so it's a bit about who we are uh, and, and again, the proof points of where we are having a material impact on the NHS and can further support the NHS going forward. So in the last 18 months, um, since John and I came into our, our roles, we've made considerable progress on focusing and stabilizing induction. We focused the business on our core products and our markets, focusing solely on the UK healthcare market, not getting into other non-health businesses who were able to focus our sales team on the UK. We divested two non-strategic assets. We sold Switch last year and we just sold Guidance um, in July of this year. So we're now very much focused on portal and video um, with videos being a key feature. So very much added focus. We've reduced costs. We've brought down both staff and non-staff costs to get the company onto a more sustainable footing. A, a very uh, large piece of our cost saving came in our cloud hosting infrastructure. Um, since work started around 18 months uh, to two years ago, um, we've brought cloud hosting costs down by 70%. So about 2 million of annualized savings which is what you'll see as an improvement in our gross margin. We've integrated our team and our product. Again, 18 months ago, we sort of operated as four separate products, largely four separate teams, uh, and we've really brought those uh, together. And we've done the first phase of integration of enabling a patient to be able to see their uh, video appointment, but also be able to launch a video consultation from within the portal. And there's other things we're doing to integrate forms into video and into other, other sort of types of integration across our platform. We've also improved team morale and culture. We focused on getting some of the fundamentals right about goal setting, performance management, and team working. Um, and we've seen employee MPS score improve 29 points over the last year, and now sits in a positive at a plus six. So again, considerable progress. I want to provide some context on <clears throat> the market guide on our announcement uh, from this morning, but also some market guidance that Singer's published this morning, uh, where they're expecting that um, we will achieve 12 million of revenue this fiscal year, FY25, and 15 million in FY26. In our annual report, we stated that we started the year at 10 million of, of ARR. Um, when we sold the guidance business in early July, that business accounted for about 0.6 million or 0.7 million of ARR. So if you think we effectively started this year at around 9.4, uh, 9.5 million of contracted revenue. So just have that in mind as we look at sort of our context and our performance here. So Zesty is very much our growth engine. This is our portal business. It's grown 51, uh, revenue grew 51% um, in the first half of this year compared to last. We have five new um, uh, Zesty rollouts happening this year. Actually, we've had uh, one happen yesterday. Uh, we've also got um, four brand new sites 
as well as three major upgrades contracted already to go in FY26 and FY27. We have a really healthy pipeline, which is growing. We have a qualified pipeline of around 30 million pounds right now. Uh, and we've done a lot of changes. We've completely overhauled our sales function um, and we're starting to see some really impressive results in them growing and them growing re revenue on the Zesty side. I think the other part too is, oh, I lost. There we go. The other thing which is important for context is Attend Anywhere, when uh, when Induction acquired Attend Anywhere back in 2021, um, uh, all the revenue and all the contracts at the time were centrally funded by the NHS and were done in a population-based model. All of those contracts now, with the exception of Wales, which I'll speak to in a minute, all of those contracts, um, that central funding no longer exists, and each hospital is now having to go through their revenue budgets to fund video with video consultations down 70 percent since the pandemic um you know trusts are looking at pricing that is commensurate with their utilization so we've been pleased that we've been able to retain 64 percent market share in england we still have a national contract in scotland and again in wales it's a national contract which will be transitioning but are confident that we'll keep uh, a lot of wales and so when they moving when they're looking at us compared to a teams or other alternatives they're looking at it on a proactive service user basis so that's really what's been accounting for the revenue churn i believe that we've hit our floor i believe that um we're now as as everyone has shifted over to these new contracts it also gives us an ability now to get closer with our customers and driving utilization but also bringing in new features uh, into into attending where that makes them pick video over telephone where we can drive uh where we can drive that increase also important to note, last year about three million of our revenue was uh, was from one-time revenue. These are professional services contract where we um, the NHS funded significant feature enhancements, which we're actively upselling. We have a number of conversations going on with our existing customers, um, so that we are driving new revenue from that uh, last year. But we did have three million of one-time revenue, and then finally, what gives us confidence in going from twelve this year to 15 next year is the new labor government has made um, large investments or, or will be making large investments in healthcare technology they've announced in the budget last uh, week an investment of two billion in tech into the nhs and there's specific emphasis and mention of the nhs app empowering patients or putting more control in the hands of patients digitizing inefficient areas of the healthcare system um, they're also talking a lot about AI, and I'll speak about AI in a second. I think there's some great opportunities for us there. But there's, without a doubt, the first half of our year when we start going through the numbers was very much impacted by the early election call. We had a number of contracts that were lined up to go uh, in Q1, but those were paused with that early election call, which uh, really accounts for um, the sort of the softness in our, our first half of this year. So in terms of financial highlights for the year, uh, we ended the first half of FY25 at 5.4 million of recognized revenue, again, down from 6.1 million the, um, the period of the first half of last year. Again, has to do with contracts being paused, um, but and the reduction in attend anywhere revenue, but, uh, but an increase, as I said, about 51% of zesty revenue. Gross margin in the first half was 78.2% up from 75% in the same period of last year. Again, very much reflective of, of um, our cloud hosting savings. And if you think about where we were over about 18 months ago, I think gross margin was in around the mid to high 60s. So again, considerable improvements in gross margin. The, 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 the worsening of adjusted EBITDA is largely reflective of just how the revenue, the reduction in revenue flows through to the bottom line. Our cost base has remained stable um, and, and that's what accounts for it. Uh, we ended the period at 3.1 million of net cash. Um, and if you look at Singer's note, they're expecting that we will end the year at about 1.5 million pounds of cash this fiscal year and 1.7 million of cash the following fiscal year. So again, sort of just to reiterate our view that, you know, we don't have an immediate need to seek funding or to raise working capital. And even with that, uh, in terms of from a cash perspective, John and I, you know, work very closely on a day to day basis, but on a regular basis, looking at cash very carefully. We do have a lot of regular inflows of cash from customers. A lot of our portal uh, contracts are paid quarterly in arrears. Um, some of our NHS um, uh, attend anywhere contracts are, are paid annually in advance. So we do have confidence in terms of our inflows uh, over over the period. Um, I, I don't want to repeat some of the operational highlights. I've spoken about some of the Zesty Go Lives. 
Um, uh, the symptoms that you go lies in the fact that we've got um, over 3 um, million patients that have access to the NHS app um, or to Zesty via the NHS app. Um, we did complete a very substantial engineering project to replace our Attend Anywhere call screen with Amazon Chime. Um, and th that's important for three reasons. One, it eliminated uh, quite a lot of technical debt in our tech stack and so really have modernized um, what we're doing. Um, the feedback we're getting from customers in terms of the user experience, the stability of the platform, especially when it comes to group consultations, has dramatically improved. Um, so, it, so it's improved our, our, our sort of technical stability, um, but it also gives us more freedom and flexibility now to add features that we couldn't before. And so with Chime and the way it's built, we're able to look at things like recording or transcriptions or plugging in AI tools to really deliver a unique experience with Attend Anywhere. But also importantly, it does generate about an additional 400,000 pounds in annualized savings in terms of the unit economics of how that platform is run. We sold um, Horizon Strategic Partners Limited, which was a wholly owned subsidiary. It was the one that uh, offered guidance, um, the guidance platform, uh, and that was sold earlier in July for 1.2 million pounds. Um, we also had an extension on NHS Wales and their national contract to the end of this March or this coming March. And as I mentioned, um, from uh, April of 2025, each of the individual health boards will procure separately for video. Uh, we've already secured the largest health board in Wales on a two-year contract and are actively engaged with the other six health boards uh, on pricing. We do expect to see some revenue churn here as they move from, again, the sort of centrally funded legacy COVID era contracts to now something that is a lot more commensurate with the utilization. We are, though, engaged with uh, NHS Wales um, around um, some funding on they have a dedicated instance. They also have some requests around uh, Welsh language capabilities. And so we do expect uh, to carry on those conversations as well. Um, and just finally, as we mentioned, uh, we um, announced last week that we secured a 1.5 million pound contract to digitize diagnostic referrals in North Central London. And I'll give some more color about that in a moment. So I'd like to take a few minutes and really walk you through where we see the portal market going and where we see our business and our growth coming from in the next couple of years. We've identified that um, there is about 100 million pound uh, to total addressable market in digitizing pathways. So if you think about the traditional portal market, as I've talked about where Zesty started, you know, the traditional por portal market very much focused on digitizing very discrete elements of a patient's care journey. So putting digital letters, allowing some basic appointment functionality and features, putting notifications as opposed to SMS, there's quite a high market penetration uh, for these sorts of capabilities with very little differentiation uh, aside from you know, our differentiation around our integration with Oracle and other things. It's largely a saturated market. And if you think about those 6.3 million patients that are sitting on a waiting list, there's two groups that we think are quite interesting and offer an opportunity. There's about four and a half million of these patients that are what are called you know, low complex, high volume, low complexity specialties where the, the element of clinical risk isn't as high as if you're dealing with someone who is on an oncology pathway um, where we can support patients along that journey. We also think that there's an opportunity around cancer surveillance, uh, around prioritized specialties. And we see as these patients are going between hospitals, between diagnostic centers, between community and mental health, that portal can sit as the connective tissue that brings these pathways together. And let me give you a couple of examples of what that could look like. So if you think about what it is today in terms of an analog pathway, so let's say that you have back pain um, and you go to your GP and you get referred to see a specialist about your back. When that referral happens, you as a patient really don't know, one, you don't know exactly what trust you've been referred to, and you have no idea about where you sit in that waiting list. And you won't know, you may take weeks before you even get a phone call from a hospital to get you onto your first appointment. That means patients are worrying, they're not sure where they sit, they're not sure how, they're, they're, how long uh, they're going to be waiting. It might prompt them to call their GP officer to have another appointment um, to find out where they are and the GP doesn't know as well. The first appointment then gets scheduled, great, they may have to wait again a lot of time before they get into their diagnostic tests. After their tests, they're not sure where they are, where how the results have gone, when they're going to have their follow-up appointment. And so if you think about that 18-week timeline, this is the, this is what the NHS wants to have done, this go from referral to treatment within 18 weeks. 
And because of the inefficiencies and where patients really don't know where they sit, um, those targets are often missed. And this is where we see, you think about an opportunity, um, where we see the opportunity going forward. So the way we see this going, a lot of this we've already built is if you are referred from a GP, let's say again, your back pain example. So you've been referred to your GP through something called e-meet and greet. The minute that that referral, not the minute, but once the referral gets to the hospital, you're automatically invited to join the portal. Right now, uh, you're only invited to join portal once you have your appointment. But if you know, okay, I've been referred to the Royal Free, um, I'll have access to waiting times data on the Royal Free, so I'll know roughly how much time it's gonna take before my first appointment. At least a patient, I know where I'm sitting in the system and I'm less likely to go back to my GP and get another referral created, which just clogs up the system. There's also an ability through the portal to do a digital assessment. So the NHS figures that about 40% of appointments don't need that first appointment, you can go direct to diagnostics. So if you think about your back pain example, you may get to see the specialist and the specialist looks at you and just says, well, you need a, an MRI and, and sort of go and do that. And then we'll have um, a broader assessment. In using digital forms, we can do that kind of digital triage. Uh, and, and if someone's deemed that they can go directly into diagnostics, um, we can give them a capability to book their own diagnostic test. I'll speak about that more when I talk about North Central London. It's possible that you could do either a physical um, or actually a virtual consultation as a follow-up if your, your tests come back somewhat normal and, and you just need to maybe go do some physio, but that can be done through video. The, you could also get the test directly into, uh, into the patient's hand via the portal and you'll know within minutes kind of when you have your next appointment. So you really have an ability um, to support those patients and to create significant efficiencies in getting from referral to treatment within 18 weeks. If you think about another example, and we talk about cancer patients, so if you think that you've completed um, your cancer um, uh, treatments and you might need to be required, you know, every three months or six months or every 12 months, you need to be seen or have some follow-up um, scans done. Right now, these patients are on a list that the NHS are having to very manually um, manage. Uh, patients are getting missed, um, and, you know, or if they're trying to place phone calls to and prompt patients to book their diagnostic tests or book their follow-up appointments. All of this is done very manually and there's a lot of waiting and patients are getting missed. So if you think about again where you could bring portal into the picture where if you've got a patient population that is registered into the portal you could you could send automatic notifications um, reminding patients to perhaps book their diagnostic tests. Maybe they can order a, an at-home test kit. Um, they could book you know their appointment if they have the ability through their their hospital or their their clinic. Um, and you can really give them that ability to, to manage their, their pathway digitally. And if you think about, you know, one of the conversations we're having right now with the trust is around PSA tracking. So if there's someone who has to have, you know, regular checks of their PSA levels, a lot of that stuff can be done through the portal where patients aren't getting missed and have a much more of a digital journey. So that's where we see um, uh, opportunity for us to use portal in a new way. And again, an addressable market, we think in England alone of 100 million pounds. And so this is very much our strategy in action. We announced last week that we signed a one and a half million pound contract in North Central London. Um, some of you may or may not be familiar with the concept of a community diagnostic centre. The NHS has set up about 130 of these around the country. So instead of you having to go into a hospital to get an MRI or a CT scan or have an X-ray, you can do it in these CDCs. And they're playing a really key role in re reducing the elective recovery backlog. But these processes, again, are very manual and inefficient and prone to error. And again, labor are um, putting some very big investments into diagnostics. We think this is an exciting opportunity. So right now, <clears throat> you use your back pain example. The consultant specialist has um, done a referral for an MRI or placed an order. What's happening in this part right now <clears throat> is an administrator is having to take a screenshot of that order and email it to the community diagnostic center. The, CDC, the CDCs then are taking these referrals, um, are having to type in the order manually, call the appointment or call the patient to book that appointment. And so the patient, again, doesn't kind of know where they sit um, and um, they don't know where they sit. And sometimes the, the hospitals will be losing track of the patient's progress and getting those diagnostics. The trust also has no visibility as to what booking spots are available. So what we're going to be doing in North Central London is for the Royal Free uh, in London and Whittington, 
and then two community diagnostic centers is using our, our induction health stream um, integration engine, which can pull data from both Oracle Cerner and System C and building a booking engine as part of it. So that when that referral goes from the, say the Royal Free to one of the CDCs, it's done electronically. So that, that so you sort of digitize the entire referral process. You can give the trust, we will be giving the trust an ability to directly um, book uh, appointments or uh, diagnostic appointments for patients. In some cases, because we're going to connect um, in, uh, Zesty to um, the Zesty portal to this, that patients in some cases will be able to book their own diagnostic tests. We'll be able to collect data on no-shows um, and uh, basically sort of did not attend appointments uh, for diagnostics and give the CDCs and the trust some insight as to what's driving some of those uh, of the those no shows. And what's really, again, from a cost savings and from a, an efficiency driver um, it, within the NHS, uh, in 2022, there were 10.5 million MRI and CT scans done. Between 8 and 11 percent of these appointments are missed. And if you think at an average cost of about 300 pounds <coughs> per MRI or CT scans, those missed appointments are costing the NHS about 300 million pounds. If we as induction can even help to cut that by a third, we'd be saving the NHS over 100 million pounds. So some really big opportunities here. With North Central London alone, they figure that this solution can save them 600,000 pounds annually. This is something that we expect to go live um, in and around March, April of next year, we are starting conversations with other ICSs at a regional level to see how we can uh, apply this uh, within their region. But we're doing this and building this in a way that's replicable. Uh, induction will own the IP, so we will be able to resell and use this technology in other situations. So I guess as a conclusion, and then we'll jump to, uh, to questions. Again, just want to reiterate, we've made significant progress in focusing and stabilizing the business. Despite the first half of this year being a little softer than last, we do have with, um, with our North Central London contract, with other funding and contracts that we hope to be announcing very soon, uh, we do have confidence that the second half of this year will be a lot stronger um, than the first half that we getting us to that 12 million mark. We do have this renewed corporate strategy that's focusing on digitizing pathways, which we're very excited about, North Central London being the first. We hope to announce a couple other contracts in the near term. Uh, which will show uh, us getting traction in this space. Um, and I really do think that we are very well positioned. We're in the right time and right place to capitalize on new investments from this new government. There's a number of projects we're working on right now that once that funding is more firmly announced uh, in the coming months around where the money's going to sit, we feel that we're very well positioned to capitalize. That is it for me. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you very much indeed for your presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, do please continue to submit your questions just using that Q&A tab situated in the top right hand corner of your screen. Just while the team take a few moments to review those questions submitted today, I'd like to remind you the recording the presentation along with a copy of the slides and the published Q&A can be accessed via your investor dashboard. Paul, as you can see, we received a number of questions throughout today's presentation. Thank you for the investors for submitting those. Can I please ask you just to read out the question where appropriate to do so, give your response and I'll pick up from you at the end. Great. Good. Thank you. Um, right. First question. How are you thinking about AI and how it fits into your product strategy? Um, yeah, we are very much, I mean, thinking about and using AI tools internally, but from a product perspective, um, we are very much looking at partnering uh, instead of building out our own AI capabilities on our own. There's a lot of really good innovative tools that are out there. Um, and we are looking at how we incorporate um, AI right now in use of large language models. The one use case that we talk about and think about right now is if you can take a recording of a video consultation or even a, a, a recording um, in, a, in a hospital room itself, um, that you can take that recording uh, and there's large language models that get very good at creating a clinic letter. And that clinic letter itself um, saves from an administrative standpoint in terms of time. We want to take it a step further. Um, with the uh, integration with the capabilities we have with Oracle Cerner, we're working on a proof of concept right now that would actually take that transcription and that, that letter and actually um, embed in clinical codings within the EMRs as hospitals are moving to different types of contracts where they actually, um, the coding is relevant to how they get paid is very relevant. 
um, looking at that uh, at that letter and also starting a um, to create a uh, an order uh, within so for a diagnostic test. So right now it could take anywhere from eight to ten minutes for a clinician to uh, to create an order for an MRI. So can we take keywords from those letters and have it actually started within the order set? Um, in a way that um, the, the, the clinician still has to validate. We don't want to become a medical device, but you could create some efficiency there. There's all the things too, in terms of how you set uh, RTT status or referral from treatment, uh, a referral to treatment status within the system. So we are looking at that right now as a proof of concept. There are AI tools uh, out there as well that help support reductions in DNAs. So we very much want to, uh, to go live with something in the next little while um, and, and leverage sort of the powers of AI. Um, I think the next question we've got is, how are you managing the threat of Microsoft Teams? A very good question, and we get asked this quite a bit. So Microsoft Teams, obviously, because the, NA, uh, the national contract the NHS has um, uh, with Microsoft, Teams, the per, there's a perception that Teams is free. And our team has done a really good job at educating customers and working with them to understand that um, Microsoft Teams does not have a waiting room functionality like Attend Anywhere does. Attend Anywhere, you, you can send out links um, the same link to multiple patients. And when the patient arrives at their appointment, there's someone that can put them into the right, right waiting room. Microsoft Teams does not have that. Um, Attend Anywhere is a lot more secure than Zesty or than, uh, than Microsoft Teams uh, in that case. Uh, and so we've been, done, we've been doing a really good job at, at educating customers and customers are realizing that it's not as free as they think. Um, some customers have been getting uh, bills from their ICS for their use of Teams. We know of one customer that had to hire four staff just to manage links. Um, so it's not as free as they think. So, so we have retained, mar yes, we have lost some customers that go to Teams, uh, but we've retained 64% market share. And I think why the call screen project was so important, important for us is that we're now in a much better place to be able to add features and functionality like recording or transcription or telephony or plugging in AI tools so we can further differentiate this for a healthcare environment. Um, <clears throat> there's another question around the share price decline over the last <laughs> over the last three to four years has been incredibly disappointing. Uh, what are your views on this, and what are your plans to address this? So, yes, I, I, I do sometimes find it a bit puzzling that we put out news that we broke even at the end of last fiscal year, and the share price didn't really move. Um, we are, I think, in terms of what we're doing uh, about this is. One, I think we, we will now start having a lot more of these sorts of interactions with investor meet. Um, so we are engaging the retail market. A lot of our share price movement that we notice is a lot of small retail trades. There's a lot of very low liquidity in AIM right now. And uh, there's a lot of other companies that are on AIM that are facing similar issues. Um, so I think it's engaging the market, but also putting out, and this was important for us, um, uh, we wanted to put out tangible news, real news that was actually demonstrating progress. And that was the best evidence we thought in terms of getting share price movement. We're hoping in the next little while, now that we put out two years of numbers, not just uh, one year at a time, uh, and in telling story, you know, engaging the market this way, that shareholders will start to respond. Our institutional shareholder base has largely remained static. We've seen some movement in the last six months, um, but largely that, that remains static. And so our share price movement was largely driven uh, by small little retail trades. Um, the next question, sorry, let me just <clears throat> get some water. Another question, how do you balance cost management, operational efficiencies to target profitability without impacting growth? Um, very good question. So I think as we go forward, we will have an ability to grow revenue without a commensurate increase in, in sort of underlying expenses. And so when we've been looking at our improvement in gross margin, this largely been investing in technical uh, infrastructure and in, in, you know um, working on projects that have brought our cloud hosting infrastructure down, um, and and so that doesn't really impact growth. In fact, it sort of has enabled us to scale uh, in a different way. Um, and so things like that, I think, is where we're balancing and making sure. You know, yes, would I would I love to be able to triple the size of my sales team if we had the ability? Yes, um, we are looking at ways of how we shift headcount from engineering and product into sales so that we can drive um, cost uh, or we can drive growth in that way. 
Um, and there's some other, other sort of efficiency projects internally that we're working on um, that will give us that capacity to perhaps move some headcount from one area of the business into sales. I hope, David, that answers your question. Um, for Zesty, what's the competition you see in deploying? Um, so our main competitors are Dr. Doctor. We also um, uh, face competition from NetCall. Um, there's some other smaller portals that are out there in the market. Um, so regional portals like up in the Northeast in Yorkshire. I think, you know, I think time will tell. You know, a lot of us have very similar functionality around appointments, around forms. Um, we talk about them slightly differently. We believe we have a, a, a true USP in terms of our the level of actual integration we have with Oracle Cerner. Uh, I know that uh, Dr. Doctor have come out and just recently talked a lot about use of AI to reduce do not attends. Um, so we'll see what they might do in, in the, in the uh, pathway management space. Uh, but right now we think that we have, uh, you know, with our I integration with Oracle Cerner and some of these other pieces, I think the North Central London contract will set us apart and, and get us ahead in some ways. We're also, I think, one of the first to integrate with Access Rio in the mental health space, and we're going to have our first men, uh, go live with that in the next little while as well. So I do think we have some opportunities um, to differentiate and get ahead of our competitive set. Um, the next and sort of last question so far is, uh, can you provide more details on the initiatives driving the Zesty performance? How can this be grown further and how sustainable recurring are these revenues? So let me ask you the, the last part of that question uh, in terms of how sustainable and recurring are these revenues. We've seen next to no churn in the Zesty business since it's um, in, in the last couple of years. A lot of our contracts um, are, are sometimes, you know, between five and nine years long because they're tied to an EPR contract with the likes of Oracle or System C. So this is quite sustainable long-term revenue. And when you find the more with, with, um, with digital uh, types of systems, as long as we keep innovating, the more embedded, the more integrated you are into these underlying places, the harder it is to rip out. The difference with my attend anywhere is it's not as integrated yet into different systems, which we're working on. So, um, so with SD, I think it is pretty, um, it's pretty sustainable from a revenue standpoint. Some of the initiatives in driving SD performance, you know, we, we continue to invest in our, in our product team. Um, you know, the, the, the 3 million of one-time contracts last year that the NHS funded <clears throat> went to new features, functionality, deeper integrations, um, you know, the North Central London contract is enabling us to, to build this more uh, robust uh, booking engine within HealthScreen to allow and digitize uh, 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 diagnostic referrals and appointments. So I think it's looking for those opportunities where we can get funding to to really uh, continue staying um, innovative in, in, in the Zesty world. So some of the initiatives, as an example, we digitize maternity records last year and so with expectant mother, mothers they have a red book that they carry around with their information that's now all in portal and we're having conversations with customers to up you know to upsell that particular feature we built the e-meet and greet functionality which i described in the pathway piece around um you know as soon as that referral comes into the trust you're automatically invited uh to to join the portal we brought video into into portal so there's a lot of these things that we've done um, you know, um, that, that will sort of allow us to, to, to upsell um, and generate new revenue from our existing customers, act as a differentiator in the market as we are responding to RFPs uh, and be more successful generally going forward. So I think, Paul, I think that was the last Yeah, question. I think you've covered think... That, absolutely everything off. So look, thank you very much indeed for that. Of course, any further questions come in, the team will be able to review those and we'll be able to publish responses where appropriate to do so on the Investor Meet Company platform. And Paul, perhaps before redirecting investors to provide you their feedback, no particularly important to you and the team, can I just ask you for a few closing comments? Yeah, again, everyone, thank you very much for, for joining us today. I know it's been a while since we've done one of these. We wanted to really get the business into a more stable and focused area and really get under the skin of our new corporate strategy so we can talk about the exciting future that we really, um, John and I really see uh, for this business. Uh, I do think North Central London will set us apart. We'll be able to um, and capitalize on a lot of what the new government uh, is investing in the digital health. So thank you very much for your time. As always, um, I, I believe in the um, in this final slide, there's an email 
Uh, you can find me on LinkedIn. Please do reach out if you ever want to have a one-on-one -on -one discussion or have any questions about how we're doing. But thank you all for, for your time today. Super. Thanks again, Paul. John, thanks indeed for updating investors today. Can I please ask investors not to close this session. You should be automatically redirected to provide your feedback in order the team can better understand your views and expectations. This will only take a few moments to complete. I'm sure it's greatly valued by the company. On behalf of the management team of Induction Healthcare Group, PLC, we'd like to thank you for attending today's presentation. That concludes today's session and good afternoon to you all.